AI print beds. These are pretty great. These have become the de facto standard for 3D printer beds, you know, starting from the PEI film with double sided tape over the classic, robust, uh, textured, powder coated ones, now to the satin ones. And you can get these in like decent quality or in the cheap import quality. It still sticks, but doesn't hold up so well. But apparently, we are already moving on from PEI because when I was browsing AliExpress the other day, um, not only was I seeing these, these cheaper PEI coated beds, but I was also seeing beds that were labeled with PET and PEO and PEY and the best of all H1H and I was like this doesn't make any sense. The only one to me that made sense out of these was PET because as the 3D printing world was moving on from uh, painter's tape and Kapton on their beds, there was a very brief phase where PET tape was sort of the, the newest, hottest deal. So at that point, of course, I was curious. These apparently are the new AliExpress standard print bed. So obviously <laughs> I had to order them all. So I'm gonna see if the promises hold up to these being a proper replacement for PEI beds. We're gonna test that. We're gonna see how cool the hologram effects are right after a message from today's sponsor. AliExpress is a pretty weird and wonderful site, but a little extra privacy won't hurt when looking through the weird portions of the site. Especially when shopping, did you know that some sites even offer different prices based on your location? A VPN can help you appear as if you're shopping from a different country or a state, saving you some bucks in the process. Hey, some sites won't even let you in if they think you're from the wrong place. Browsing on an open internet connection lets others analyze and profile which sites you visit and how you spend your time on the internet. If you don't want to be profiled and tracked, a VPN can help your private browsing sessions stay truly private and provide that extra layer of protection. A while ago, I compared VPN providers and private internet access came out on top for me, checking all the boxes for your features while also being one of the most affordable options. Private internet access hides your IP address and encrypts your internet connection, shielding your digital life from the eyes of your internet service provider, network administrators, and government sensors. PSVPN can now move your virtual online location to 91 countries, including every single US state. And Pia does, of course, work with all your favorite streaming services. And there is no limit on how many devices you can use at the same time. If you need it, they have 24-7 live chat support and you can try them risk-free with their 30-day money-back guarantee. Check out the link in the description for their special holiday deal, 83% off, down to just $2.03 a month and you get an extra four months for free. Thanks again to Private Internet Access for sponsoring this video. So, as is AliExpress tradition, these come pre-packaged in a trash bag for you. Let's dig into these and, and see what we actually got here. One, two, three. So, ju 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 Upine? Jupine seems to be the one who is making all these beds and they're the ones who have most of the listings on AliExpress. Okay, so these are very well packaged for being just a, a steel sheet, essentially. Okay, so there's the first one. Um, these are all claimed to have a standard coated PI side on, on one side. And then on the other side, they have whatever special surface they put onto them. So this one is, I think, the PEO surface that has like little holographic circles on it. Hi there. Oh, that's a good peel. That is a very holographic surface. Um, if you look against the light, if you look sort of at the reflection there, it sort of has a hexagon pattern, and I guess every little hexagon piece is just one of these circles. That is a very nice and shiny surface, and supposedly this does imprint onto your parts that you're making, so the bottom surface is gonna have the same pattern on it. The PEI coating on the other side has sort of a, a, a very fine texture to it. It's not as coarse as some of the other textured ones. The quality, I don't know. We're gonna have to see how well this holds up. Um, but it does seem to be properly coated and not just a film that they stuck on. So that's good. So this one also seems to have sort of the same holographic texture, but in a different style, more or less. Oh no, <laughs> it's ruined. So this one has sort of a circle brushed stainless steel look to it, also very holographic. And then on the other side, we get this crazy... 
On the other side, we get what they call the H1 age pattern. So this has sort of long stripes. This is hard to look at actually, wow. Now this one has to be the PET surface. Interestingly, this one is labeled Idea Former. Probably the same company making these. Hey, maybe this one performs a bit differently. So these again seem to have the same sort of PI, fairly smooth texture on one side. Very light peel on this one. This one is actually pretty cool to look at. It's a, it's a repetitive pattern, but it has this, this polygon style. This one might actually mesh the best with like low poly prints that he put on top. And then lastly, yeah, this is the one they're calling PET. So this is sort of a very obviously fake carbon fiber surface. Um, you can actually print on real carbon fiber, resin impregnated carbon fiber, but this is just a film, this is fake. So I think these are actually all going to behave very similarly when it comes to how well parts are gonna stick, but that's what we're about to test. So I got these in the Prusa Mark III Mark IV sort of shape, and if we put these on top of each other using an original bit here, they are a very close match in size. These are actually available for every single printer size. So whether it is Voron sizes or Bamboo Labs, P1P, X1 Carbon, um, you can get these just cut out for any printer that you want. So if you just drop one of these on here, let's see. So that lines up. Yeah, that lines up pretty much perfectly. And I mean, I'm not usually a fan of like tacky carbon fiber patterns, but this one is like the least obnoxious one that I've ever seen. So I actually kind of like it on there. I'm just gonna wipe these down with some denatured alcohol uh, and finish up by cleaning with some water uh, just to get any production residue off. And then we can start with some test prints in PLA. We're gonna move on to PETG and then ASA, ABS, something like that. Uh, that's gonna be the final discipline. And I'm just gonna see how well these hold up, whether they get torn up by the probing cycle um, and you know, how well the parts stick. That's the most important bit. If it looks cool, but doesn't work, then you know, what's the point? Okay, we're done with the PLA test prints. And honestly, I gotta say, I, I do sort of like the look that it gives the parts. So um, the carbon fiber and this polygonal design, these do work pretty well. They're not that tacky, and they just give that bottom surface a bit of texture. The like H1H super holographic one and the, the circly one, which I think is the PEO. I don't know, they're very bright, they're very loud. Um, not my style, but hey, it's an option if you wanna use these but you may have already spotted a couple of print issues. And with this part, this is the one done on the, oh, still stuck pretty well, uh, done on the PEI sticker sheet on the original one. This one stuck down perfectly. There is no ridge on the side here where it might have warped up. And the centerpiece looks great on both sides. This is print in place, so it can freely spin. Now on the one with the polygonal design, you can see it's sort of it's sort of spun out while printing. So this part must have come loose. And then the bridging in here just ends up looking super crazy and stuff because this part must have just continuously spun while printing. On the other hand, the one with the polygon surface uh, has the same thing going on on the other side. And if we actually grab a straight edge, you can actually see that there is quite the amount of bowage on these, um, just curling up by what looks like pretty much a millimeter. And that is, oh, that one's even worse. Uh, that's across almost all of these. The H1H actually looks like it stayed the flattest, and then comparing to the one printed on the Smooth PI, this one is just perfect. All in all, when it comes to function, this is not the most promising start for these surfaces, 
they all did warp, they all did curl more than just the straight standard PEI. So let's go ahead and test these with some PTG and uh, that's something that usually sticks a lot better and I'm sort of worried that it might actually stick too well. So before we take a look at how these PTG prints turn out, maybe I should actually explain how these beds work and what makes them so special. Essentially, these are all built in exactly the same way as the regular PEI sticker type sheets, the smooth PEI. They've got a steel sheet in the center, then an adhesive film, and then your surface film on top. However, with these, that surface film has a micro texture imprinted on it or embedded into it. With the polygonal style and the carbon fiber style, uh, you can actually see that texture with the naked eye. If you get really close and you have decent eyesight, uh, you can just barely make it out. But with the holographic style ones, the texture that is imprinted here is so fine that it actually diffracts light in different ways and different wavelengths get diffracted in different ways. So you actually get that color shift as you move around. And because that texture is all the way at the surface where you're printing onto, it eventually gets embedded in your print. You're just pushing molten filament into your parts and then it ends up on the part as well. So this is actually very similar to records, LPs, um, if you're still familiar with those, just at a, at a bit of a different scale. So how did the PETG prints fare on these surfaces? These are all vase mode, very thin, but you know, quite challenging to print because there's a sharp edge right there. And this is quite the mixed bag. Uh, the two holographic surfaces have quite the amount of corner lift. You can see it right there catching the light. Um, right at the corners, these do stick up quite a bit. Polygon and the carbon fiber textures, they do have just the tiniest amount of corner lift at the edges, but nothing that is really worrying. And then the one that I did on the textured PI, this one's essentially perfect, but it's also quite hard to tell whether these have lifted. I don't think they did. They look very flat. But yeah, overall, the two novelty holographic ones do look quite a bit worse uh, than just ones with texture. And then on the H1H surface, this is so hard to see. I guess you can sort of make it out there. Um, we are starting to see some peeling, and I guess this is going to imprint into your parts as well. It's just where the adhesive is starting to let go uh, between the holographic film and the metal sheet. All right, let's get some ASA printing, and then we can get to a conclusion. Okay, so realistically, none of these surfaces really stuck down all too well, except for the textured PEI. That one came out pretty good. So if I'm being honest, I was ready to write off these surfaces as being like, you know, tacky and novelty and they're, they're just a gimmick that sort of looks cool. But I actually like them. I think they're, I think they're pretty cool. Um, these do have lower adhesion than your classic PEI sheets, yes. Um, but on most of these, you actually do get a textured PI surface on the back. So that's sort of included for free. If you need more adhesion, you can use that. And as far as the, the look goes that you get from these, from these surfaces, I actually think it's pretty practical. Of course, the, the super holographic ones, uh, which is this one that's like super glossy, that may be a bit over the top, but that's personal preference. But stuff like the, the carbon fiber and the, uh, the polygon style, I think they look great on prints. And Adhesion is good enough uh, for all parts that aren't like adhesion testing parts that have like super sharp edges and stuff. So these are actually something that can enhance your prints. And if you use the texture sparingly and if you orient your parts in the right way where the texture gets applied to surfaces that, that sort of stand out, I think these can make a great addition uh, to you know just your toolbox, to the stuff you can do with your 3D printers. I should note though that because these have that textured surface and you can you can really hear it on the on the two coarser ones, they are quite sensitive to being damaged. If you get scratches into any of the other surfaces, that is also going to show up in your parts one-to-one, -one, of course. But I think if you treat them with a bit of care, then these can last for quite a while. You know, not everything has to be purely about enhancing performance and, and getting everything to the limit. Uh, these, I think, are just the right amount of playfulness while still being practical surfaces to print onto uh, to make them, you know, viable. Plus they're only like 
10, 15 bucks each. The links obviously to these are in the description below to AliExpress. If you find other stuff on AliExpress that piques your interest, uh, that you find weird and you would like me to check out, leave a comment with like the search terms, keywords for those, because typically there's like hundreds of sellers that sell the same stuff and one listing may not be available in a couple of weeks down the road. So yeah, uh, leave a comment below. I'll try my best to check them out. And if there's something that I find interesting, I'll do a video on it. You know, that's what I do. Uh, thanks to everyone who finds these videos interesting already and supports me on Patreon or through YouTube memberships. Uh, that is much appreciated. Or, you know, just watching the videos, getting subscribed, uh, sharing them with your friends. Thank you. And if you got a 3D printer for this holiday season, uh, welcome. And I guess it's not keep on making, it's get to making. Make some cool stuff with it and use it for things that bring you joy. All right, thanks for watching. See you in the next one. Bye.